Day now. This is March 18th, 2024, and I want to just add some more context to the car. Now, you know, I've been telling everybody we're pretty much done. We finished the car, it's ready to go. It runs, it drives, it does its thing. We did a, a couple of upgrades since the video number 11 came out, but I wanted to talk about something that really didn't get filmed very much now it didn't get filmed for multitude of reasons a because it happened over almost a year period where andy and i couldn't find a solution for the issue now in the last video you guys see me driving down that street right out there and i give it a little bit of gas and we rip it and we're just happy as shit. we get the car back on the lift and then andy checks for what oil leaks oil leaks that's the first thing you do when you put a new engine in a car or in this case when you rebuild the entire car. So to our surprise, there was a small bit of oil leaks, but one oil leak in particular, relatively not a surprise because we talked about this when we were building it, but we didn't have a chance to fix it and we weren't able to fix it. Crossing your fingers <laughs> we, and hoping for luck. Yeah, we hope for the best. Basically to put some context here, this right here, let me show you. This right here is where the engine mates with the gearbox, this little plate. And there was not an oil leak. It was like a hole in the engine. I mean, it was leaking so much that you couldn't actually like be under here because it was puddling the entire floor. So underneath there, the crank seal that we referenced, I think in four or five, video number four or five, was, uh, was bad. And we kind of knew it was gonna be bad, but we didn't have a choice. We, were, we wanted to pull it off but we couldn't replace it because Bugatti didn't want to sell me the crank seal without selling me a whole engine to go with it. So, boom, there goes the radio. Can, can you get me the seals too? The, the seals on the uh, gearbox side and the uh, engine side, the two seals. And well, we had no choice but to pull the entire car back apart and figure out a solution with the seal. In 2022, in August, I spoke with uh, one of the very heavy presidents of Bugatti America and at the Bugatti party. And I was like, look, dude, he's like, well, how's the car coming along? And I said, you know, to be honest, we have this really big issue and I haven't really talked to a lot of corporate people about it up until this particular date. I told him the issue and I said, I just need a crank seal, dude. Like, I know it's gonna leak, it leaked, what are we gonna do? There's rust on the crankshaft, it went through the seal, it created some holes, and now we're here. So he agreed to sell us the seal, and now it's like $30, okay? It's literally like $30, like legit. Like Bugatti charged me like $30 for the seal. But with one caveat, they wanted me to replace it at the dealership, so they wanted the Bugatti dealership to do the work. Now, I hadn't had like the best luck with them, with the whole like fuel pump thingy that was like right over here. Remember that? That was uh, starting the car, anyways. I decided to say yes, we're gonna put the crank seal in the engine and we're gonna give it our best shot. The cost of splitting the car in half cost more money than half the supercars you guys have seen on the internet, okay? And I, I just didn't have a choice. I didn't want to spend the money. This put me well over what I estimated to spend, the budget, all that, and the process took about six months. So that's why we're in 2024 now and the car basically is, is done now, okay? Basically, we know we have a little bit of an issue with our crank, and we ordered this. So I did a lot of research, and I found that they make, it's called a crank sleeve. And this particular technology is like the thinnest piece of metal you've ever seen. It's almost like invisible. So you can slip it over your crank that has basically pitting damage. I mean, it, it's it's essentially built for exactly what I was going through, right? So this is a larger one. This is 3.8. 
Now I got this one as a backup in case the crank was measured wrong. So we're taking this one with us. Nice. Now 1127 is 3.75, which is the same exact dimension as the one we tried last time. Mm -hmm. But when I got that one in the mail, I was like, wait, I can machine this one down. So I went to the Gilbert's machine shop here in Vegas and he did this in four hours. He made me a 3.775, but he also thinned it out enough to where I can use that same seal. And he made me this press fit tool as well to where we can put it on here, heat it up. These have to be installed where you add a little bit of heat and then they, they basically sit, expand and go on there because they're thick enough to expand. And so with this tool and this, we should be able to make this happen. Right now. All right, so we're in the engine bay of the Veyron right here. And um, this crank is, see it's got a little bit of um, uh, pitting on it. That creates a no seal effect um, when it comes down to the gasket going over here. This is the rear main seal. So this is the bell housing. Here's the gearbox right here. And um, obviously the rest of the engine, you know, is down in this area. So we need to knock this seal on here. What this is gonna give us is a new seal for the gasket to go onto. And um, it's just a, I mean, it's like point zero zero two smaller than that but i think what's happened is because it's so cold outside that we have uh to heat it up a little bit before we can knock it on because it's got to expand us a little bit so okay so let's heat this up but i think you should i mean all right i, I brought my gloves so i can do it too you sure well if it gets hot i'll let you know all right <laughs> All I have to say is <laughs> you, buddy. <laughs> I told you it would work. I was 99% sure. Okay, so now I don't, it's so hard to get in here and see, but basically you can see we have a perfectly smooth edge now on our crank. So um, it's flawless. Let's get the crank seal on there. Let's get the flywheel on there and uh, just make sure, I mean, honestly, if it's out just any little bit, those flywheel bolts, when you compress that on there, they're gonna push it right on. Right now, it's not gonna leak. <laughs> nope. It's tight. And it's got a nice, uh, even surface on that crank now. Yeah. I'm just worried that the seal might rip. But I don't really understand how the seals work because if they, if the thing is spinning in there, then it has to have some flex. Mm -hmm. That yeah. doesn't have any flex. Yeah. Well, the you know the flex part is like that inside part that uh, yeah. that had to go around this, so that's gonna flex like. Mm -hmm. like this but it's going to keep a constant pressure on the crank itself yeah um, and then this outer lip is what keeps the oil from coming out there's no way to turn this car on right no i'd have to put the car completely back together yeah but like how can you like because the starter goes in here well, what i was saying is can you basically set the gearbox on right and get this to where it's not all bolted together and then turn it on and just run um, it um no not really no not really but uh yeah i was pretty proud i'm like I, I got all the lights to clear like this thing was running good the only thing was that that oil leak you would park it and you just trail of oil the next day like it was bad well it's not gonna leak now yeah so so what a day that was we went probably three different times to Ogera. i only put in the footage of the success uh that we had but it took a few months to get this problem solved. Now I went from 
custom shop to marine here, marine there. I went to so many different places to try to get a crank sleeve that would work. And we finally had one made, which worked out really, really well. And in this video, you guys just saw that they, we, we put the seal on. And there's not much filming after that because we were pretty involved in the restaurant business at the time. And it was difficult for me to just jump on a plane, fly to LA and film it. So from here, it took a few months for Stan to put the car back together, test it, make sure everything worked. And it did, there's no leaks. So from here, I decided to send the car straight to E3 upholstery in Florida, where they're gonna do our brand new interior. So that brown interior that I bought off of eBay uh, was just a placeholder. I was never gonna keep the car purple on brown. I mean, it didn't look bad. It was nice, but uh, it just wasn't me. And uh, I think you guys all know what's coming next uh, with the design of the CCX. I never should have sold the CCX. I didn't want to sell the CCX, but money talks and the car left. So I changed the design of the Veyron to match the inspiration I had with the CCX. And this is the next step. So I get some custom touches and it took almost a year from the point to when we put the seal on to when the car was done back to me with the, I almost said it. I almost said the color. the interior oh man what a beautiful place to be this was a kind of the second iteration of this creative color combo I guess you would call it that I thought of when I did my Koenigsegg CCX rebuild um, and you know that car I did uh, purple paint and orange interior similar to this one but here, I wanted to take it just one step further and I wanted to add some texture to the car. So we added starlight through the doors in each individual stitch. Obviously we have the standard starlight in the ceiling. And here we did a little bit of the Super Sport Vitesse uh, stitching through the center console and all of the uh, aluminum in the car was painted, hand painted black. So as you can see, it changes the look of the car dramatically. Uh, I didn't mind the silver, but everybody else's Bugattis were silver. So I figured might as well darken it up, make it just unique in every single way. And I think it came out pretty spectacular if you ask me. There's a few subtle touches uh, as we have the uh, Bugatti badge and the steering wheel was hand painted purple. We have purple Alcantara throughout here and back here. We also have purple Alcantara in here. So it's just a, it's got a little bit of a uh, custom feel to it. Behind the windshield, we've got purple Alcantara. Uh, and in here, also purple Alcantara. And the most important thing, all this interior would not be possible uh, to sit in and enjoy without that subwoofer right there on the floor. So. I believe I have the world's only subwoofer in a Bugatti Veyron. Another world first. <laughs> so, what's next? We need more power. The second everything works for me, and I knew it wasn't gonna explode, we are gonna take it straight to the dyno and tune it to the maximum capabilities possible. Mm -hmm. 